You're a fierce warrior. Used to adventuring, looting bodies, claiming the treasure. Well, most of us aren't. We just like to slouch around, sitting on the couch eating crisps, don't we? <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Friday Fancy Show from the Belt of the Limp. Oh, <laughs> exploring the realms of fantasy. My name is Ken Boyta, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of those game books. Yes, do you remember back in the day, it's about 35 years ago now, Fighting Fantasy. Penguin published Steve Jackson and Ian, Liverst Ian Livingston's series of fighting game books. They're the ones where you choose the adventure. Well, I had the pleasure of catching up with the author of a brand new one. This one is called The Sword of the Bastard Elf. So I thought it'd be interesting to see just how far game books have come in these 35 years. This is written by Herman S. Skull. Hmm, not sure if that's a made-up name or not. Illustrations by S... And I how do I pronounce this? Iacob. Iacob. It's I-A-C-O-B. Iacob, I guess. And it says here it's a two-fisted fantasy adventure. Hmm, I think that sets the tone. <laughs> so just what is it all about? It has an intriguing title, as you've probably gathered, The Sword of the Bastard Elf. That pretty much sums it up. You play a bastard elf. You are half elf and half human. And you are a mere 60 years old, which is young in elf terms. And you have been staying with your uh, parents, your, well, your mum, your elf mum, and there's a stepdad as well that you don't like. It's very clear that you don't like this stepdad. And it's decided for you, you've just been mooching off your parents and, well, your mum and the stepdad, and they don't like it anymore. They decided that you're old enough now, you're 60 years old, you need to be booted out and find a place in the world for you. Well, being the lazy so-and-so that you are, whoa, I can't even bother to turn this light back on. That's how lazy I am. You decide that you're not too happy about it. So you go off and sulk. You do something in your bedroom, which I can't, I don't really want to get into, but it's a bit messy and a bit sticky. And you then get kicked out. You've got five minutes. So you have to grab three items. Yes, this is a choose your own adventure. So you have to pick three items that you've got sprawled around your bedroom and you get kicked out. And you are told that, well, you know, you could go and find your human father who lives in a town of Bielge. I think it is Bielge town. And so that's your quest. You set off. And that's an interesting quest. And your name, by the way, yes, you've, you've kind of forgotten what your real name is. And you have a nickname of Bastard. So that is your name. Yeah? Yeah? Imagine if someone tries to insult you by calling you that, you go, well, that's my name. You're not going to get insulted. Now, as you can see with the game books, um, they are, I don't know if you can see this, hopefully we'll put some images up, but they are, I'll give you a brief way how they, play, how they work. They're, you don't read them in order. There are paragraphs that are numbered and you start normally with paragraph one. So you will read that and that sets a little bit of a background to what you're doing. And then it will give you a choice. So, and this isn't the choice that they give you, but it might be you come across a, you know, you're walking down the road, you come across three separate roads, you know, there's a fork in the road, so to speak. Do you go west, turn to pay, you know, turn to insert 76? Do you go north, turn to insert 382? Or do you carry on going the road that you were going south? Yeah, for example, and you turn to page, you know, uh, insert 56. So you go to those paragraphs. So whichever one you pick, you then flick through the book and then pick up the story from there then you'll have another set of decisions to make at the end of that paragraph. Or, if you're unlucky, you might be getting yourself into combat. Ah, my big bright lights might come and attack you. Or something like that. It's normally a creature, a monster, or a person that will attack you. Now, this is interesting. As you can see, this is a rather thick book. For those of you that play the fighting fancy books, they're slightly thinner. There's normally about 400 to 500 entries. This one, you could say, is a bastard of a book. There is over 1,800 entries. 
That is just a crazy amount of entries. But <laughs> it does mean that you're going to get a lot, of, a lot of gameplay out of this. Now, again, I was intrigued to see what the author had done with the actually updating or, or changing, evolving, I should say, the combat system. And it's very clever. It's all in keeping. The sense of humour is beautiful. It's very... Um, not necessarily sarcastic, but it's very surly. It's very kind of, um, you know, grumpy. Uh, you, you, you know, you're, you're, you're playing a character that's actually a bit kind of, a bit moody, a bit teenagery, if, I, if I'm being honest, a bit sulky. And so your world views are very negative. They're very, but they're very funny because of that. Now, what you do is you, there will be a section, there's an introduction, and it tells you all about how the game plays. You have something called Elan, you have Effort, and you have Fists. Because <laughs> you start off, now you've got two fists, which, you know, I use for fighting, obviously. But you, basically, you roll a couple of dice, and then you determine your... Now, Elan is actually, um, what's that to do with? That is... Uh, I don't know what that means, actually. I'm trying to look now. But you've got Elan, Effort, and Fist. Now, Effort is obviously your stamina. So you roll, and that's actually, that's kind of how I saw it anyway. And what you do is you roll a couple of dice, and then you determine your Effort. And when you go to do... Uh, uh, there's obstacles that are along the way. They're called hassles. And what you do there is you determine how much Effort you want to spend on this hassle. And there's normally an, there's normally an option just to go, oh, I can't be bothered to do this, I'm out of here, and you just leave. Now that's obviously very good, very in theme, very in keeping. So that's quite a difference where you kind of go, well, this has got, so the, the hassles have a difficulty level, so you might have a difficulty level of 10, and you might go, well, I'll, in order to really make sure I, I beat this hassle, I'll put a 20 effort towards it. And then obviously you roll a couple of dice and you determine who has won. And you can defeat hassles, you know, I think it's depending on how many fists rating that is. It does get a little bit complicated, but again, they've evolved it. They've tried to kind of, I guess, these are definitely aimed for adults. So they don't have to be as simplistic as the fighting fantasy ones. Not that I'm knocking that, that's a great system. But what I'm saying is that he's gone into a little bit more complexity with hassles. There's difficulty levels, there's hassles that are combat, there's hassles that use fists, and there's hassles that have consequences as well. So you, you, it's worth spending a little bit of time learning how to do it. Obviously, when you come across a hassle, you can go back to the start and reread how to do with hassles anyway, which is what I did. And then once you grasp it, it's pretty straightforward from there. But obviously, the more effort you spend, you actually lose the effort. So if you have, I start off with has, uh, 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 effort of 50, and you know you kind of think, well, once it's gone, it's gone. You don't replenish it back. So if you put 50, you know, if you put 45 effort into a hassle because you definitely want to win you don't get it back so i'll be down to five now if you lose i think the game ends if you if any of your three things elan effort and fist gets to zero i think that's correct yeah if any one of those gets to zero then you actually lose the game so you don't want to commit too much effort so it's a balancing act so i quite like that i thought that was quite clever um there is, there is a scroll sheet, as you can imagine, adventure scroll. This is where you list all your stuff. Obviously, hopefully, we'll put an image of that on there for you so you can have a closer look at it. And you've got loot, which is determined to two areas. There's junk and equipment. Junk, and it's very funny because it's kind of how you play. I mean, it's how I kind of play Skyrim. When, you first, when I first played Skyrim, I'd be collecting everything, putting it all in my backpack. Yep. Oh, look, what's that? A rotten apple? Yeah, I'll need that sometimes. You know, a bent fork? Yeah, I'll need that. That's useful. A bit of string? Yeah, we'll bung that in there. Anything you can get your hands on. And then you slowly realise, ah, not all of it is useful. So he's playing on that. There's junk and equipment. Equipment is stuff that you're war wearing or you're wielding, and you can't change mid battle. So it does give you opportunities to say, do you want to prepare what you're wearing and what you're wielding, any weapons? And you go, yes, I do. And you alter that before you get into any mischief. So that's quite a good touch as well. It lets you actually prepare, just like I guess, you know, Skyrim or any of these games where you can, if you see danger coming, you think, oh, actually, I'm going to use, I'm going to swap my, for my sword for my longbow because they're far away. Again, it kind of allows you to do that. It doesn't allow you to do that all the time, but in certain places it does allow you to do that. So you'll be collecting junk. There's no limit on what you can carry. So yeah, you might as well just pile it all in. 
because eventually it might come in useful. There is a nice crafting system going on as well, which means so there are certain combinations of objects that allow you to craft. So it might say, you can take the, I don't know what's coming to head, uh, uh, the knife, if you've got the rusty old knife and the rusty old fork, because you might pick them up separately and you've got them together, you can combine those by crafting it, but you do lose both of those items. You can't uncraft it once it's crafted. And you might come up with like an uber spork weapon. Yeah, it might create something else. So that's a nice little touch with crafting. There are other things. There is guards, wagons, and properties as well, but um, I didn't really get into those, but it, it said don't worry about those until you come across them. There are words of power as well, so it looks, again, I didn't come across those either, when, but I didn't play this uh, for hours and hours and hours on, letting, on end. I basically played it for, well, probably about three hours, four hours, I got really into it. And that, to me, is one of the key aspects. Just like when you read a book, or you watch a film, or you play a board game, you want to be engaged in the story and the characters. Now, I really thoroughly enjoyed this. I love the fact that it's not your typical hero, and that the quest isn't some amazing quest. You have to go and get the Sword of Damocles, or you have to... No, it's a spoof fantasy book. And he does it brilliantly, though. But he does pay, he paid a lot of respect to the fantasy genre. He knows his stuff. He clearly loves fantasy. But it's just a bit spoofy, which is great. It's fantastic. So if you've got a good sense of humour, you will love this. The quest is simple. You're just going trying to get to another town and find your dad to go and live with him. Oh, yeah, I didn't mention that. But, yeah, that's what you're trying to do. You want to go and mooch off your dad instead. But there are twists along the way. I won't spoil it. Um, because that there are multiple endings, and that's probably a good thing because look how many entries there are. Plus, this is a separate book, um, which is the item card deck book, which, and again, the sense of humor is, um, it says at the beginning of this, as, as, a, as, a, as a blatant attempt to, to, to cash grab, you know, to make extra money, we've done this book for you. Um, so it's that kind of sense of humor. And this has got all the, items that you'll come across and it looks like you can cut these out and you can use them in front of you to keep a you know to keep a check on what you've got and what you haven't got the other thing that it has got here which i will mention which i thought was a really good twist as well the whole game book sort of industry the idea came from steve jackson and ian livingstone they did they didn't invent the branching story that was already there but what they did is they added the combat element to it and the reason why they did that was penguin asked them to, to, to write a book about, our, uh, about role playing games initially, because when they set up Games Workshop, they sold Dungeons and Dragons. And they said, well, okay, we could write that. We could write the history of it and what it is, but the best way to know what an RPG is is just by doing it. That's the best way. So that's why they did those books, the Fighting Fantasy books. So, having said that, the origins were an RPG. Now, what this guy has done, Herman S. Skull, is he has also done a, a role-playing section in here as well. And you, there's a DM involved, or what does he call it? A dungeon bastard, I think is what they are. Um, he obviously likes that word. And it's got all the elements that you'll need to create. I'm just looking at them here. There's loads of sections. It's quite a thick section. If you want to play a couple of scenarios of in this world that is set up. So there's a one dungeon master and then two, two to three players. I think there's a maximum of four players, although RPG, you don't necessarily have a maximum. And so it's got that element in it as well. So he sets a couple of scenarios for you as well, if you just want to get up and running with that. Plus it then gives you advice and tips on how to create your own scenarios within the world. So I love that idea as well. So overall, this was, for, for me, this was quite a good eye opener because I'm thinking of writing a, a, a game book as well. So I'm doing a bit of research just to see how far and how evolved the fighting fantasy sort of genre has come, you know, the adventure books are. So this is a, certainly a welcome addition from my point of view. You can get this on Amazon. So yeah, check out The Sword of the Bastard Elf. <laughs> hey, just because it's fun to say, the Sword of the Bastard Elf. Did thoroughly enjoy it. I would definitely recommend this is for adults only, or if, you know, if, <laughs> if you're 14 or 15 and you secretly buy it, you would really, really enjoy this. 
Um, yeah, I certainly wouldn't let little kids read this. There's certain objects that you find along the way that are considered adult. There's adult themes that run through this as well. And so it's cool. I really love the sense of humour and the writing is very good as well. And the gameplay, it all stacks up. Thank you so much for watching. We have done Fighting Fantasy review as well. We did the new Port of Peril, or the Peril of Port. Port of Peril, that was it, by uh, Ian Livingstone that came out this year, because the uh, Scholastics have actually relaunched all of the fight, well, they're getting to rele release all of the Fighting Fantasy ones as well. In fact, they, uh, they hired Charlie Higson to write The Gates of Death, which I want to review as well. Anyway, check out all our other reviews on our YouTube channel. Until next time, remember to keep it unreal, especially if you're a bastard elf.